Da-da-da-dum, 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 da-da-da-dum. <clears throat> yeah, it's Doctor Who this time on me. Hey, and welcome to Making Wormholes. In this episode, we're recreating the time vortex from the best title sequence that show has ever done. Ooh, controversial statement. Is this engagement bait to get you to post in the comments? No, it's just a clear statement of fact. And this particular vortex is one of the easiest in the series to recreate. For those of you who found me through a search, you'll need to go watch or download either the Tropico Particular Particle Tunnel or the CC Particle World Tunnel, and then you're good to go. The CC Particle Worlds project leaves you almost there, but for the Trapco Particular one, we need to make a few changes. In both cases, the first thing to do is increase the multiplier to 4, so the tunnel is 4 times longer than the original. And in particular, set the particles per second to 40. But if you're using CC Particle World, set the amount to 80. In both the CC Particle World version and the Particular version, set the particle blend mode to screen and make sure the particle size in CC Particle World is set to 0.5, while in particular it should be 50. And then open the particles text precomp. Hit reset on the turbulent noise effect. This clears out everything except the evolution, which is set to time times 1000, which is fine for our purposes. Set the type to dynamic and invert it. Set the contrast to 375 and the brightness to minus 65. Expand transform and up the scale to 150%. Back in the main comp, make sure any rotation speed values are zeroed out. Delete any colour effects you've added. And if you haven't already, go and download Video Copilot's free colour vibrance effect. There's a link in the description. But now, set the colour to a royal blue. I've got this hex code after using a colour picker on the original video. And set the brightness to 1.5. Now, if you're using CC Particle World, expand extras and set the depth cue to 1 which gives us just a hint of the tunnel. To do the same in particular, in visibility, set the far vanish to 3000 and the near vanish to 1500. To help sell the speed, add an optics compensation effect, if it isn't there already. And set the value to 70 and check reverse lens distortion. Okay, getting there, but there's one element missing. In the project window, duplicate our particle text comp. Easiest way is to select it and go to Edit, Duplicate. In this comp, delete the turbulent noise effect and the adjustment layer. Then, making sure the elliptical mask tool is selected, double click it to add a circular mask to the remaining solid. Set the mask's feather to 50 and the expansion down to minus 25. And with the mask selected, Duplicate this, and set the type to subtract, and then reduce the expansion again, this time to a minus 50, so we get a thin, faint circle. Now go to Effects, Distort, Turbulent Displace, and set the size to 15, and then hold Alt and click on the Evolution Stopwatch, and type in Time times 1000. So now we have this wobbly circle. Drag this duplicated texture comp into our tunnel comp. And if you're using CC Particle World, duplicate the particle layer, hit enter and rename this to rings. Drop the particle count to 8. And now, in the particle settings, set the texture type to Textured Quad Polygon. We're going to take advantage of a feature Quad Polygons offer. Swap the texture layer to our Wobbly Rings precomp. Zero out the rotation speed and set the initial rotation to 90. And for particular, drag in the newly created duplicated precomp, the wobbly circle one, and turn it off. In particular, expand show system and add a system. Set the particles per second to 3, change the emitter type to lights, zero out all velocities and the size. I did consider using the duplicate emitter option in the designer, but it's simple enough to do it this way. In particle, set the life to 100 
and set the type to textured polygon and random still frame. Normally we'd use a sprite, but we want to vary the shape of the circles. So we're going to add a wiggle to the rotate X for each particle. Speaking of which, expand rotation, set orient to motion to on. Zero out any speed settings. Then hold alt and click on the rotate X stopwatch and type wiggle brackets 300 comma 120 close brackets. So 300 times per second, select a value between minus 60 and plus 60 degrees. And as we're drawing the whole tunnel in the first 10 seconds, that should give us plenty of variation. And set the size to 50. Let's have a quick preview of both tunnels. That's looking pretty cool to me. What do you think? Is that the cloister bell? Move alert, it's an incoming like and subscribe request. Hang on, if I just reverse the polarity of the neutron flow, we should be able to bypass the algorithmic compensator and jump ahead in time. Or you could just push the big red button. Either way, we're back. So now, the colour change. Well, it just so happens that we helpfully included a slider in the camera's point of interest direction control. So, at a moment in the comp's timeline of your choosing, expand camera null's controller and set some keyframes to reverse the direction. Then, just before the reversal point, set a keyframe on the camera POI slider and move ahead the same amount after the camera nulls keyframe and set a new one to minus two. Now the trouble with this is the camera POI moves through the camera causing a jump. What we need to do is move it out of the camera's way. Hit P to expose the position keyframes and we already have a value at time expression here. Expand the expressions area and in front of the existing expression type tunnel pause equals. So we've made it a variable. Then after, on a new line, type x equals tunnel pause square brackets zero semicolon. And the same for y and z, changing the zero in the square brackets to a one and two respectively. So now we have the individual values for the position. Now add distance equals and use the pick whip to link to the distance slider. If brackets distance is less than two and and distance is greater than minus two, close brackets, open curly brackets. Dist equals distance. If brackets dist is less than zero, close brackets, open curly brackets, dist times equals minus one. Close curlies. X equals X plus brackets 200 minus dist times 100, close brackets, close curly brackets, then square brackets, x comma y comma z, close square brackets. Okay, so what this expression is doing is saying that if the null's position is less than 2% closer to the camera, move the x value off to the side by 200 pixels minus the same amount. And if it's below zero, correct that by timesing it by minus one. And so now we have a slick programmed camera move. All that's left is the color change. And we can use the same keyframes on the slider to control it. On the VC color vibrance effect, hold alt and click on the color stopwatch. And type distance equals and pick whip the camera POI's distance slider. Make sure there's a semicolon. And then on a new line type linear brackets distance comma two comma minus two comma hex to RGB note the capitals brackets quotes D35929 close quotes and brackets comma hex to RGB brackets quotes 0556F1 close everything up if you're doing this in CC particle world Remember to do this for both the particles and the rings layers. But that's it. You've made a really cool time tunnel and can now add the TARDIS, the 3D extruded names and the spinny shield thing. It renders really fast in comparison to 3D software and you'll have recreated the greatest best Doctor Who title sequence ever. Da 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 dum, da 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 dum, da 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 dum, da 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 dum.